So welcome to module three of our course. The topic of today's lecture is about zero knowledge. This is the outline of the course. We have seen already a review of basic cryptographic primitives. Last module was about what is a proof. <clears throat> Today I will talk about what is true zero knowledge. The other topics are, are lying ahead. Um, and today's course will be divided into four or maybe five parts. Um, I will start with authentication. Authentication protocols that use challenge and response. Um, this is my, my strategy to explain zero knowledge to, to people. Um, look at this protocol, for instance. You have a, a client and a server, and we want to do uh, password authentication, for instance. So we assume that the, the client knows a password or, or, or a key, the server knows the same password. But we want to avoid that the password itself goes over the over the internet. So one of the things that, that you could do is that the, the server, in this case, the verifier, sends a challenge and it's an implicit uh, request like, please encrypt the challenge. So the prover takes the challenge C, uses the, the key K and produces the response R and the verifier is going to verify if this is okay. So this is interesting because um, we have a situation in which the proof shows knowledge of a symmetric key, but this key isn't showing over, is not uh, sent over the internet. Note that this is a form of unilateral authentication. The, the server is verifying the client, but it's not the other way around. You can, instead of using symmetric cryptography, you can also use public key cryptography so here I, I use this A hat as a way to denote uh, a private key and, and, and A is simply the public key. Um, and you can, you can talk about encryption or you can talk about digital signatures. So um, the verifier sends a challenge and the implicit uh, request is please sign this. So the, the prover signs, signs the, the challenge sends it to the verifier and the verifier using the, the public key of the of the prover is going to check whether the, the digital signature indeed is correct and if so um, accepts the authentication and you may find it interesting to know that in, in SSL TLS so when, for instance when you use um, HTTPS on your browser. This is this is exactly what's going on in the background, except that now the roles of the client and the server are reversed because it's the the verifier is the user who is checking the digital certificate of the of the website. So this is you must you must invert the roles in compared to the the previous uh, setting. Um, now, the interesting thing is that um, challenge and response, they test knowledge of some secret, uh, secret value, um, like a pin, a password, or a key. But we can actually uh, do things which are more interesting. So, historically, it's interesting to note that Fiat and Shamir, they developed this protocol in which an authentication protocol in which um, the user shows knowledge of several square roots modulo n. And, and this actually, this problem is equivalent to factoring. So this is this was like a, a, a provable authentication protocol. And also, so this is the, the original Fiat Shamir identification protocol. And this is exactly the context in which the Fiat Shamir heuristic, the Fiat Shamistic, uh, the Fiat Shamir transform appeared for the first time. Um, now, instead of using uh, knowledge about square root, you can use knowledge of discrete logarithm. This is the one that I will uh, explain to you shortly for, for two reasons. First, uh, because the math of the square roots is slightly more complicated. And the second reason is that actually I was co-author of this, this paper. So uh, it's a sort of nostalgic thing to include it. But I also think it's pedagogically a good protocol. 
And then later on, uh, we will talk about knowledge of a uh, Hamiltonian cycle. I'm going to also show you knowledge of a uh, satisfying assignment for a Boolean circuit. Um, and of course, the, our game is that we want to do uh, knowledge or that some computation is correct, which is the context of SNARKs.